Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials Video 2. It's on chemical analysis. Um, one of the first early chemists, Jans Jakob Berzelius, who was Swedish, came up with the way that we write out chemical formulas. And I love this picture here. It's one of those where no matter where I move, he seems to be watching me. But, um, so when we write out CH2O, which is actually going to be the empirical formula or the simplest formula of a sugar, let's say, glucose, um, we owe it to him for that. But if we look at the actual structure, this is what glucose looks like. So it's going to have six carbon, 12 hydrogen, and six oxygen. But chemical analysis is simply looking at a compound like glucose, for example, figuring out what's in there, how much of that what, uh, and then how it's all connected together. And so in chemical analysis, we're looking at compounds. And remember, compounds are going to be made up of atoms, and each of those atoms have a specific mass. And so what we can do is look at the percent mass. In other words, how much of that mass of that compound is made up by each of those different atoms. And that tells us what the composition is. It also can help us figure out the empirical formula. That's that simplest chemical formula. And it also can be used to test the purity of a substance. In other words, is it just that or are there other things that are added inside there? And so let me give you an example and we'll come back to this at the end of the video. Let's say we take vitamin C and we put it in a mass spectrometer which is going to tell us the percent mass of all of the atoms that are found inside it. And then we get this spit out. So we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And it tells us the percent mass of each. In other words, it tells us how many grams are going to be made up of each. Could we figure out the empirical formula? Well, we will, and we're going to get back to that in just a second. And so let me use analogy to begin with. So just like matter is made up of atoms, we could talk about something like a big Lego structure being made up of Legos. And so let's say we had this base unit and it weighed 2.5 grams, it doesn't matter if we have a larger or even a larger unit made up of those smaller blocks, it's all going to have the same average mass. In other words, if we divide by the number of bricks, we're still going to have an average mass no matter how big the sample of those Legos is. But now let's get to solving it the other way. In other words, if I gave you a big structure that weighed 320 grams, could you work backwards to figure out how many bricks are in that structure? Well, you'd use factor label to figure that out. In other words, if each brick weighs 2.5 grams, I can write it out like this. Now we can cancel off those grams. And so what I get is 128 bricks in that structure. And so what we can do is we can work backwards from that mass and we can figure how much stuff is inside there. Now when we're working with chemistry, we don't deal with bricks. What we're going to work with is something called a mole. And so let me use gold as an example. Let's say I had one mole of gold, or four, or 32. It's all going to be the same mass. And what is a mole? I'll talk more about that in the next video. It's essentially a usable amount of an element, a usable amount of a compound. And so all of these are going to have the same average mass, 197 grams per mole. Now where am I getting that 197? Just like one Lego piece weighs about 2.5 grams, one mole is going to weigh around 197 grams. And so where do we find that? On the periodic table. And you should get used to just opening up that periodic table. And so if we look at gold, its atomic mass number is going to be 100, around 197. In other words, it's 197 atomic mass units, or if we have one mole of it, it's going to be 197 grams. So it's going to have the same average mass. And so what we can do is we can convert to moles. We can, just like we converted to bricks, we could convert to moles. And let's say I have a two ounce chunk of gold, which is around 56.7 grams. Um, and so what I could do is since I know that one mole is going to be 197 grams, I could cancel off those grams again. And what I could come up with is about 0.288 mole. And so a mole is going to tell us how much of that element is going to be found. So let's go back to that problem again. Let's say we're given some vitamin C, we put it in a mass spec, and we get this data out of it. What is that telling us? It's telling us the percent of each of those inside there. And so what we could do, let's throw that data out here, is we can convert it to moles. And once we have it in moles, we could figure out the empirical formula. So just like we did with the gold, how do we convert this to moles? Well, we'd have to get out the periodic table. And so since carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01, we could write out this conversion. We're going to cancel off the grams of carbon, and that would be 5.11 moles of carbon. Likewise, if we were to convert the hydrogen, again, it's going to have a different atomic mass number. We can convert those grams of hydrogen and it'd be 6.8 moles. So that doesn't tell us much yet. 
Let's go to oxygen. Oxygen's atomic mass, remember, is 16, so I could cancel this off, and now we get 5.11 moles. Well, that's weird that these are the exact same. Not really. That's can be, it just is our first piece of evidence that there's the same amount of carbon as there is oxygen. Let's simplify that a little bit. So since we divide them each by 5.11, we get 1 of the carbon to 1 of the oxygen to 1.33 of the hydrogen. Now should we write it out like that? You've never seen a chemical formula written with any kind of a, anything aside from whole numbers down here. And so what we could do is multiply the whole time, thing times 3 and now we get the empirical formula of vitamin C or ascorbic acid. Now is that really what it looks like? No. And we'll get to that later. This is what it looks like. So it's actually going to have 6 carbons, it's going to have 8 hydrogens, and it's going to have 6 oxygens. But you can see how we can use the mass to figure out what's in there and then how much of that what is going to be found in there as well. We could also use a mass spec to figure out the purity. So if we were to throw that vitamin C in there and we get kind of evidence like this, well that tells us there's a lot of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but we also have some impurities in there. We have some mercury and palladium, which is something that you don't want in your vitamins as well. So could you fill out this concept map? Could you fill out the spaces? Could you pause the video right here? Okay, let's go through it. So chemical analysis is used on compounds which are made of atoms which each of those atoms have a specific mass. Remember, we can therefore use the mass percent to figure out the composition, in other words, what is in the compound. We could use that to figure out the empirical formula, which is the simplest whole number formula. And then we could also use that to figure out the purity of that substance. And so did you learn the following? This is what I was hoping you would learn. Number one, you can use mat mass data to identify or infer the composition of pure substances and or mixtures. So again, we just look at the mass percent of everything that's inside there. And then the second thing, could you use mass data in order to justify a claim regarding the identity or estimated purity of a substance? And so those are the two things that you should be able to do. We learned how to figure out the empirical formula, and I hope that was helpful.